Hi everyone, I'm Curran and I'm going to be your instructor for this class. I'm super excited to be doing this. It's sort of been my dream to be a professor and this is my first professorly position so I want to do everything I can to make sure this course goes as well as it can. I'll start by introducing myself, then I'll go over the syllabus, and then I'll go over the assignments for this week. I spent my teenage years in Paxton, Massachusetts, just north of Worcester, where WPI is. Then I spent nine years getting my PhD at University of Massachusetts Lowell. During that time, I did a bunch of data visualization work. I worked in a couple different research labs, and I spent a year in Germany. After graduating, I spent a year working at a startup company called Alpine Data Labs in San Francisco. And during that time is when I really started to create things using D3. What you see here is blocks.org slash current, where I've put some of my D3 code examples. After working in San Francisco for a year, I got married and then I moved to India, where I live now with my wife and daughter. And I've been working remotely for about a year and a half now, doing uh, data visualization consulting work for different clients, and that's been going really well. Some of my most recent work has been done for the United Nations Refugee Agency, like this stream graph here that shows persons of concern by origin. So these places are where people are coming from, and on the x-axis we see there's time. This is a stream graph visualization. Now I'd like to go over the syllabus. The syllabus is posted here as the main page of the Canvas site. This is our required textbook, which is a really awesome book. Tamara Munzner, oh man, she's been in the field for many years, and she's got some really deep insights here into visualization, and she's laid it out so nicely in this book. So it's essential that you get this book. In terms of the reference material, we're going to be using d3.js a lot in this class. So anything you can do to augment your abilities on the technical side with D3 is a good thing. This one's really good. Interactive Data Visualization for the Web by Scott Murray. This just came out. This is a great intro to D3. D3 in Action by Elijah Meeks from Manning Publications. This is a great thorough introduction to D3 and the second edition hasn't been released yet. It's in MEEP, which is Manning Early Access Program. But I would recommend getting this MEEP uh, edition as a PDF because it uses ES6 and D3 version 4. It's very modernized. I'm actually working on a video course with Manning Publications about D3 and I would welcome you all to take a look at this course as well. It's not released yet, but hopefully it will be released soon, and I think I'll be able to get you all free copies, actually. Let's see. This one, Semiology of Graphics. This is one of my all-time favorite books about data visualization. Let me read from the back a little bit. Originally published in French in 1967, Jacques Bertrand's Semiology of Graphics is internationally recognized as a foundational work in the fields of design and cartography and data visualization. This is like one of the seminal works of data visualization. It's filled with really cool visualizations like this one that shows historical trade over time. The Grammar of Graphics is a really cool book too by Leland Wilkinson. He lays out this sort of unified framework of creating data visualizations. And this, the stuff in this book, was actually the foundation for the ideas behind ggplot, which is an implementation of the grammar of graphics in R. So this is a great book too. It shows you how the grammar of graphics plays out in R. And they've got all kinds of examples here. So I like to just flip through this one to get ideas about how data could be visualized. I'll let you read through the course description and learning objectives. I want to talk about this communication section. Slack is going to be used extensively as like the main channel for communications. 
And I want to keep communications wide open, you know, from students to other students, between students and me, using Slack. In order for this to work, you need to be able to check in, you know, check Slack for updates every 24 hours at least, just to keep on top of what's going on. If you don't do this, it's not really going to be that effective. So please be present in Slack. I will be available in the Slack channel most weekdays from roughly 8 a.m. to 11 a.m. After that, I'm going to be in bed because remember, I'm physically in India right now. If you have a question that another student can answer, please post it in Slack. Then other students will benefit from seeing the answer. If you need a quick communication with me, feel free to direct message me in the Slack. Otherwise, email me and I'll do my best to respond within 24 hours. If you have any feedback or suggestions about how this course is going, you know, how I'm running the course, the tools that I'm using, please give me feedback. Don't hesitate. Don't hold back. Give me feedback by posting in the feedback channel in the Slack. We will have office hours as a synchronous hangout session via Zoom meeting. This is optional to attend, but I'd welcome you all to, you know, hang out with me on this Zoom meeting every Monday, 10 a.m. to 11 a.m. EST. D3 has an amazing global open source community around using D3 and doing data visualization. I would encourage you to join the global D3 Slack team. This has thousands of people there, and there's a channel there called Help that you can post your questions to, you know, technical hurdles that come up. There's a lot of people that can answer you very quickly there. And also, if you make something cool that you're proud of, share it in the examples channel and maybe tweet it too. On to the course approach. I'm going to use Canvas to manage submission of assignments and grading. This is my first time using it, so if anything comes through to you as odd or confusing, please just post in the feedback channel in Slack so I can address it quickly. You know, when I was a student, I would frequently skip through the recommended reading or whatever and just look at the assignments that I have to do for the week and then figure out what do I need to learn in order to do those assignments. And so I chose to organize this course around assignments. So you'll see that there's a couple of assignments present already and in those assignment descriptions is the material that you need to consume in order to be able to do those assignments. So just be aware that assignments are really more than assignments. They're actually videos to watch and documents to go through. This is a 10 week course and it starts on a Thursday. So our weeks are oriented from Thursday until the next Wednesday. So all of your assignments and stuff will be due by Wednesday at midnight each week. You'll be expected to put in 10 to 15 hours per week on this course. And I'm serious about this. And this came down from the WPI folks. You know, uh, this is really what I'm going to expect of you. So if this scares you, if you don't have this time in your schedule, then I'd recommend you drop the course now before you get overwhelmed. This course content has a listing of each chapter that we're going to read. And it has some broad descriptions of assignments or project work. And these things might change week to week. I'm going to give detailed assignments each week with grading criteria. In terms of the grade breakdown for the whole course, it's 50% on assignments, 30% on your projects, and get ready, there's going to be a big project that you're going to have to do. 10% on quizzes and 10% on participation. Participation is graded because I, I think participation is really important, like posting things in Slack, responding to other students. So that's 10% of your grade. Late work will be accepted, but for each day that it's late, that's minus 10 points. So after 10 days late, don't even bother. In terms of technical requirements, you should get these things set up as soon as you can. You need a Chrome web browser, 
because we're going to be doing a lot of web development. You need to have Node.js installed on your system and NPM, the Node Package Manager. This is not so much for server-side development, but we're going to use some development tools like a local HTTP server using Node.js. Also, we're going to be using Git and GitHub. So please make sure you have Git on your machine. And uh, if you don't have a GitHub account, please make one. Now on to the assignments for this week. You can see the assignments listed here. Introduce yourself, create a bar chart, current events, data viz research, and week one reading and lecture. Referring back to this grade determination breakdown, I'm going to try to make each week's assignments reflect this breakdown. So if you're in Canvas and you click on Assignments, you can see that these assignments are broken down in terms of the categories from the syllabus. Assignments is 50 points. Project is 30 points. Quizzes and participation are both 10 points. Clicking into each of these will give you the full details for each of these assignments, including the rubric that I'm going to use to grade them. So I'm not going to go into detail now about these assignments. All right, that concludes my introductory video. I'm looking forward to seeing your introductory video and getting to know you all and going through this journey of this course.